Uh, welcome back now. It's still the breakfast on uh, Floss TV in Africa. A Nigerian military aircraft uh, crashed them on Sunday, and uh, Nigerians are still talking about it. Uh, we want to look at uh, all that happened yesterday uh, uh, with a view to uh, re reviewing them, the issues and them safety and um, reducing them crashes in Nigeria. Yes, and we've invited to join us this morning Air Vice Marshal Femi Badibo. Good morning, and thanks for being here. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Oh, yesterday was a sad day for Nigeria. We saw what happened. That military aircraft crashed, you know, close to the Abuja airport from Mina. And we've seen tributes pouring in Nigerian government, the president, the United Kingdom, other countries, you know, basically saying, point tributes for Nigeria and the people who lost their lives. Let's talk a bit about this, especially with uh, the possible causes that led to this crash? Well, we had an instant failure. That's the information we have. Um, engine failures will happen for various reasons. Aircrafts are supposed to go for regular checkups, um, scheduled checkups. They are hourly and also by time. And there's also what you do every morning before an aircraft goes out for a flight, where uh, the aircraft has, um, you know, an engineer that is in charge of the aircraft. They do their basic uh, checkups and ground runs and so on. And then the aircraft, and then they sign off some documents which says that everything seems to be okay. And then the pilot comes and goes through the documents, goes through an external check, uh, which involves looking into the engine intake, so if it's a propeller airplane, actually checking the propellers and so on. And then from the point of starting engine to the uh, final full engine throttle at takeoff on the runway, um, the pilot goes through what you call V1, V2. Uh, these are engine speed checks that show you at certain distances uh, if the engine is performing optimally. So it's like you put full power and you know that by a certain distance you must have attained a certain speed. And by the time they pull the nose of the aircraft up, the pilot still has an option of declining to continue with the takeoff. And most transport airplanes like this one has two pilots, which means that now you have two people who are checking on the various systems. And at the point of lift off from the ground, the engine is 100%. Um, it is assumed that the pilots have certified themselves that everything is running well. All the instruments are indicating normally. Uh, but as we saw in the aircraft near fatal accident that happened in the United States just the night before on United, uh, United Airlines uh, 737 aircraft. Um, to be honest with you, I actually went to bed on uh, Saturday night very excited at the fact that the pilots in America were able to bring that aircraft down safely with no loss of life only to have me get the root shock about 8.39 of this accident in Abuja. Um, both aircrafts had, I would say, maybe similar situations in the sense that the, air, the pilots de de uh, determined that there was a failure and they decided to come back to land. What that re determines is that you require to turn around. Um, obviously, maybe the aircraft in Abuja did not have enough altitude because they were just barely six minutes in the air when the whole crisis started. Uh, we, and then um, you also have a lot of built up areas around the airport in Abuja, estates and so on. And uh, part of the information I have is that the pilot elected not to crash into one of the built up areas. That will cost you altitude, that will cost you concentration and uh, unfortunately, this is what we had. And then, of course, the aircraft was fully loaded 
with fuel, which is what led to the fire. As you could see that hitting the ground was not such a bad thing, but then um, because of the fuel they had on board um, and some, some sparks that took it, the, the, the aircraft caught fire. And that's how come the, we sustained, uh, you know, um, total loss of lives in that, in that crash. Um, Badibo, let's look at all that has happened yesterday. Could this crash uh, have been averted in any way? And just how do we begin to ensure that um, our pilots um, take off and um, they land and the issues of um, crashes and don't occur as much as possible? You know, looking at what we've had in recent times in Nigeria, we had um, um, a crash somewhere in Okwebi just last year and now we're having this yet again. Well, um the crash in Okbebi, um, if you recall, was a result of, um, you know, the pilots trying to make it to the airfield, even though uh, it was obvious that they'd run out of fuel, or they were close to running out of fuel. And so you could look at a judgment error there. Um, the pilots could have elected to land somewhere a football field was all he required, uh, a small cleared space, but then he thought he could make it to the airport and then <clears throat> he ran out of fuel. And unfortunately he came down in a built up area. Uh, in this case, <clears throat> it's a situation where um, the only place he could go safely was to go back to the airport to land. Of course, um, there are cases where you could try a crash landing with an aircraft that is um, not moving too fast. And if there was some relatively clear area without trees, Abuja has some of those areas at the airport. But then we've had too much built up around the airport in terms of housing estates. So I'm not sure he had that much space to maneuver. Um, and so it was not a controlled landing. You see, when you take a decision to, to crash land, then it becomes a controlled landing where you coming to touch down on farms or whatever as if you're landing on an airplane. Now, visibility, you know, you may not have as much clarity of vision in terms that there could be a gully or there could be some big trees and all that you could run into until it is too late and you touch down. But most of the time, you probably could make a decent landing All right. and uh, walk away from it. Air Vice Marshal Maribo, uh, the news we're hearing is that well, this military... Yeah. Okay, we, we got information that this military aircraft, you know, was in a surveillance, you know, to Niger State. And that's to, to try and see how they can rescue the kidnapped Kagara boys in Niger. And we see the situation happening, an engine failure, or we don't even know the exact cause at the moment because they say investigations are still ongoing. And this happened, all seven people on board crashed. How do you think this might impact on the you know, rescue efforts by the government to rescue the Kagara boys? Um, well, I think there's information to the extent that the boys have been released. Uh, sometime last night. Um, we're waiting to confirm that this morning. But this incident, like I said, happened six minutes, um, or it started to unfold six minutes after takeoff. They were still way clear of Niger State, of the area where the Kagara boys were. Um, I would not like to delve into speculations as to um, whether some people tampered with the airplane or not. Of okay. course, the information as to what they were going to do must have been available to some people, including the technicians uh, taking care of the aircraft. I would like to look more at the fact that uh, the morale of the, of, of the pilots and the technicians who are on board the airplanes, and then they have their colleagues who are still doing the same job, and there's a need to quickly come out with the findings to reassure them that okay. everything was fine with the aircraft. Um, the, the Beechcraft uh, 350i, which is the aircraft they were using, is, 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 is a private, um, what you call, like, it's a propeller aircraft that is configured to operate like a private jet. 
and uh, it is it has a very high safety record. So um, I'm sure that even the Americans, the manufacturers of the aircraft, are interested in knowing what happened, and there will be um, some experts will fly down to also come and help the Nigerian Air Force in determining exactly what went wrong here. Uh, mind you, the aircraft itself has uh, a black box, which is a flight recorder that records every engine parameters from engine start to, to, to the crash itself. It, in, it records the voice, I mean, you have a voice cockpit recorder that will record all the uh, voice exchanges in the cockpit. All these things will give a clear indication of what has happened. But Indeed. I would like to... Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to butt in here, but we're really running out of time. But the good news is that investigations are ongoing. Uh, we can't wait to yes. get to what the, the Air Force, you know, would, the reports the that they would put forward. And uh, our sincere condolences, you know, to the families of all who were affected. I personally know someone who, you know, has a friend, you know, that, that was a victim of this. So I quite, pray that your soul rest sad. in peace. And hope that the president's you know, does follow up on his word to create safer airspaces in Nigeria. Thank you very much, Air Vice Marshal Gladibo, for your time on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll now turn to talk plus trending. We'll have yes, Booking we November uh, in-house social media correspondent to let us know what's trending today.